Hi everyone and welcome to the second video from Chinsi to Madre Stick. Uh, this is a video part of the Silk Route Symposium. So if you haven't seen the first video, please click here. I will also leave all of the links of the other videos uh, of this symposium in the description box. So make sure to check that out. My name is Aidan Zucchelli and thank you very much for watching again that's amazing seriously it's really impressive that you're all into this uh type of theme and you are spending time here with me i really do appreciate now we're going to talk about the second fabric that is amazing and i feel like people don't really talk much about it that is the madras uh the madras is also an indian fabric that just like the chintz got <laughs> sucked into the world because of the fashion and uh, got imitated all around the globe. It is very similar to tartan, however, um, the difference is that madras is made of cotton and not of wool. And also it can have lumps of cotton in the thread, so it's not exactly smooth 100% of the times. And it has the name madras because it was created in the city of Madras Patnan. According to Britannica Encyclopedia, Madras was shortened name of the fishing village of Madras Patnan, known as Chennai since 1996. In the early 16th century, claims of St. Thomas uh, was buried, attracted Armenians and Portuguese merchants. A trade network developed around the Portuguese port of San Tome. Uh, established around 1522. In 1639 to 1640, the British East Indian Company built a fort and factory trading post near the fishing village of Madras Patnan. At the time, the weaving of cotton fabrics was a local industry and the British invited uh, weavers to settle around the fort. In 1652, the factory of Fort St. George was recognized as a presidency, which is a type of admi administrative government by our president. And uh, between 1668 and 1749, uh, the company expanded its control, meaning invaded more territory by about 1801, the last of the local rulers have been shorn of its powers and the British has bec had become masters of southern India, meaning that uh, the last dynasty had a bunch of people killed and civilians around as well. If you would like to know more about Chennai, I suggest you to check the link that we're gonna leave on the description box that is about Chennai um, on the UNESCO page. And uh, they had also tons of other stuff for their Silk Route program as well. Madras in Europe. And again, just like Chins, Madras got stolen from where it was originally and transported to uh, Europe and it was again a huge success. Uh, in my opinion, I feel like the Dutch are the ones that love Madras the most and um, here we can have we can see uh, an undercap made of oost in dish bont, uh, from Hindelopen. Uh, today, they say that uh, this type of madras is mostly known as uh, Brabant's Bolt. And I'm sorry, my pronunciation. <laughs> um, so back then, people would wear the whole assemble uh, being of matching or mismatching chintz and all the accessories they would do with madras. You would have caps, kerchiefs, and aprons being the most common ones. And of course that got translated to the Americas. When you have a trend like that, that people are buying lots of kerchiefs, lots of aprons, uh, the pieces are already sold as, as they are. We have um, evidence of cargo in Portugal that they were transporting like over a hundred uh, kerchiefs, not just 
chintz but also uh, other fabrics in specifically already cut and finished as a kerchief and that came to the Americas as well and people started buying to be fashionable because they also want to be part of uh, the society they want to assimilate and you know be appreciated for being trendy and respectable and amazing and beautiful here we have some women selling linen in a British market and they are pretty much all wearing madras it was very common that Creole women in the Americas would be wearing uh, white but because of the regulations that they had to cover their hair not just because of the law but many women were also um, of Muslim descent uh, they naturally would cover their hair to begin with um, they started to do that with uh, a good-looking uh, kerchief because not necessarily um, people would see the turban as they would wear in Africa uh, something as desirable but for sure matching the kerchief with the head wrap was something that they did quite a lot uh, and also having mismatched but also in a in a same color pattern coordination with the designs was also very popular uh, later and uh, history of madras from the 19th century to 20th century is very interesting that madras became in europe something uh more preppy it was considered more a uh, masculine pattern and not as feminine and something that would be perfect for a sporty assemble so we have several examples of uh darker or more colorful print and this is one that i think is really really cute that is part of a set traje de menina a escocesa so it's scottish girls um assembled and this set is dress uh of madras of black blue red and yellow with uh details in silk and uh silk velvet and it also has a matching bonnet i think it's just adorable this is the kind of thing that my mom would make for me as a kid growing up that's adorable i had a madras skirt in my family still call it that way we call it madras we don't use the, any new words for this old uh, style fabric and this is also kind of the reason why I specifically chose this uh, fabric to talk about because my family every winter we would have a new symbol or a new piece made of madras no Here I have these amazing pictures, uh, amazing drawings of Creole men in Japan selling uh, animals in the market and this is a seven, 16th century uh, painting of Portuguese uh, descent, people wearing madras. I, I think it's just so smart <laughs> and I love Japanese style. like. Is just so amazing and the way that they see us is just so unique um, colonial madras so according to the museum Cooper Hewitt this is a button <laughs> it was a tribute to Agostino Brunias as well and it was made to Toussaint Louverture uh, here we also have a man in Peru most likely a servant it is a mulatto man with uh, chins and madras here we have a free woman of color wearing a tignon and she has her little pet with her is a toucanette here from louis antoine cola 
a, per, a portrait of a free woman of color wearing a yellow thing on. And here you're gonna see that I use a lot different words for pretty much the same thing. Uh, depending on where the person is from, they will use different words for head wrap. They are all head wraps, but there are various nuances, not just because of the ethnic group that they, uh, they belong, but also the way that they wrap their hair. So these are Tignons. The next one you're gonna see it's uh, an enslaved woman from Brazil. And this picture is a picture. It's from Augusto Stahl, and she's wearing a turban, and she's wearing the madras. Uh, here on this picture, it's a little bit blurry, but it's what may be Nina Igbo people wearing George. That's how they call madras there. They, they call her George. Here we have another painting. Uh, this is from the Museum Nacional da Arte Contemporânea, Museu do Chiado. And the name is Os Pretos de Serpa Pinto, the Blacks of Serpa Pinto, which seems to be uh, talking about two enslaved people that belong to Serpa Pinto. So we don't know who they are, but we know who captured them. In here, she's wearing chintz and also wearing the head wrap with the madras. And much, much love for the people from the Philippines that had to endure the Spanish like we did. Uh, here I have some pictures of, uh, of Philippine women. And there, interesting, the name is Kambaya. And Kambaya is interesting because it's uh, related to the type of weaving, like Kambaya, that were also from the region um, in India. And here we have Mestizos de Manila by Juan Ravane showing the checkered narrow parties of Saya of native women in the 18th century Philippines. Also the European style clothing of men. We have La India del Campo Tendedora de Justiniano Asuncion, 1855, and then Lavadera de Miguel Zaragoza and from the Museum of Pat Museo del Prado. Here we have street vendors selling fabrics. The vendors were plain cotton bottoms, striped pants and hat. Then here we have this Saks uh, Fifth Avenue ad for Madras. And it's funny because it's such an old ad and yet yesterday I bought pants from them. Madras as a national costume. Madras is so important in the Americas that it become kind of like a Caribbean tartan where each island has their own unique uh, color pattern. Now some people have claimed this phenomena as being due to Scottish men being stationed in uh, East India when the British were occupying India but People were doing these designs before them even got there, so I don't really know uh, what's that about. So obviously historians disagree. <laughs> Scottish people had been doing uh, tartan since before Christ, but never with cotton. While on the other hand, we know for sure that India has been in commerce with Africa and also nations like the Igbo in Nigeria wear uh, madras and they both traded with the Portuguese as well. It is possible that these people, when they got abducted and trafficked to the Americas, they kept wearing uh, whatever they already liked, whatever it was comfortable and felt like home and it felt like it was part of their identity to begin with. Of, of course, whenever they had the chance to do it, because we know most people perish horribly during the human traffic to the Americas and also had the most awful life being enslaved in the worst conditions possible. But whenever they were able to express a little bit of themselves through fashion, through their wear, 
they would and they would do that not necessarily because they were copying a Scottish man but because they do wanted to show that they too can afford uh, this specifically style of fashion and they assimilate part of the wear but they do it in their own way. According to Elizabeth Ofosua Johnson, other small ethnic groups in Ghana, Senegal, Ivory Coast and Cameroon use the cloth for several ceremonies including weddings. Here's an interesting breakdown of uh, Virgin Island madras uh, and their different colors and what they mean so here you have the designer debbie sun with the madras that she designed i think it's just amazing i love everything about it uh in jamaica however it's funny because the madras is known as bandana another term for kerchief that has its root in india bandani in Urdu and Sanskrit loosely means tied, tied up. And it's funny because bandana in Brazil means paisley, another Indian fabric that... That's for another video. <laughs> and here we have some women wearing bandana in Jamaica or Madras in their Creole dress. The wab or guam wab is a national dress of the countries like Dominica, Santa Lucia, and French West Indies. Uh, it is a variation of the 18th century Creole wear that consists in an ankle jupe skirt, a chemise décolleté finished with brodehie, uh, brodehie anglaise, and red ribbons, and an overskirt with madras, uh, and a foulard or kerchief tied sideways and tucked into the skirt. And another piece of madras for the hair that is called tetinle. Uh, in St. Lucia, the very name of their national costume is madras. So madras is a type of fabric that has a very specific pattern, but also the very name of their national wear. And interesting enough, their quadrille dress doesn't include madras while while brazilian uh pretty much every brazilian quadrille dress do include madras when you're not having chins you have madras in that that is just so traditional and here we have this amazing runaway show uh that happens in montserrat that is the Madrastik. The Madrastik was an event to celebrate their madras and you have many designers here showing how they would wear this beautiful beautiful pattern that they have there. I love the colors of Montserrat. Montserrat, I love you. To finish, I would like to thank you all for staying until the end. This is where some people have like the span attention of a butterfly. <laughs> So thank you very much. And I would like to thank Yuwondi Colleen for the help with the pronunciation of the Dutch words. I hope I did an okay job. <laughs> thank you very much. I also had other people that helped me on Instagram. So thank you, thank you very much. Without you, uh, this segment wouldn't be possible. I'm sure you guys noticed that these topics are so complex and interesting and I am very passionate about it. However, we can't just do 17 videos of 20 minutes. Uh, I would love to talk more about chins and the whole process, how the uh, the pigments are done, how the printing is done, how the dyeing is done. I am absolutely uh, in love with this and this is what I research, this is what I do. <laughs> so if you want to know more about um, uh, organic pigments and how things were done, let me know in the comments because then maybe together we could create another video and I'll be waiting to hear from you 
in the comments as well. Did you know any of these fabrics? Did you find it interesting that so many nations have madras now as part of their national costume and they carry this tradition until today? Maybe you're from Brazil and you had no idea how many other countries also had Creole wear so similar to ours and quadrille dresses also like ours. So let me know in the comments. I'll be online answering and just engaging, getting to know you all. Uh, thank you very much. I am Ayron Zucchelli. Bye-bye.